guys welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to talk about as you can see on the screen persistent volume and persistent volume claim so persistent volume and persistent volume claim are actually a subsystem of kubernetes ecosystem right and you actually make use of persistent volumes to reserve some storage either on your host or maybe some external iSCSI or nfs storage or maybe some cloud provider right <coughs> for your uh, kubernetes cluster so Ideally, you would want to actually keep your uh, application as stateless as possible and you would not want them to generate any data or consume any data. But in case your application is, uh, I mean, is so sort of application which generates some data and that data is of importance and you would want that data to persist, uh, we actually make use of persistent volume, uh, right? So for data to actually exist. So what you do basically is you reserve some storage either on your host and like I told you, uh, maybe some external NFS or SKZ disk or maybe some cloud provider. And once you uh, reserve that uh, volume, right, you can either do that uh, manually or we can either make use of say something like uh, storage classes. And so probably we'll talk about storage classes in the next video. Uh, so in this I'm going to show you how to manually create a persistent volume on the host system itself So we'll not be using any NFS or any cloud provider, right? We'll be creating persistent volume on a host system So and then we'll be making use of persistent volume claims. So it's I mean if there's nothing new you suppose this is your uh, So this is your oh, where is my pen sorry Bloody technology so any which way so where were we so we were Okay, so PV and PVC. So, like I told you, I mean, suppose this is your host system, and inside this, you reserve some storage, right? Storage, and you reserve that by creating a PV. And suppose this is your Kubernetes cluster. And these are your pods, right? And now if you want to say, use this storage class, this storage class inside your pod, what you do is you actually create a request using persistent volume claims, right? So you actually make a request using persistent volume claim and depending upon the size you've requested and the class you've requested, uh, Kubernetes API lets you mount these inside pod so now then you have a storage inside pod right so we'll see this uh, when once we log into our uh, terminal right so now this is all the theory we have now let's just go inside a terminal and start creating persistent volumes and persistent volume claims all right <clears throat> so now what we are going to do since we since we are in terminal we are going to create a pers persistent volume and a persistent volume claim and then we are going to mount that claim inside a pod right so since you cannot create persistent volume or persistent volume claim using kubectl uh, so you would actually have to use the manifest file so i have already already created a couple of files so first one is for my persistent volume so this is called pv.yaml so you can see uh, the kind is persistent volume api version 1 metadata name is my pv and under the spec section so you, i have defined some access modes so you can read about access mode in the documentation as, as well but i'll tell you that once it says read write once that it can be mounted in read write on a single node if it has read write many so it can be mounted as read write many on multiple nodes and there's one more uh, i think it's read only once yeah so there are access modes defined capacity so i am going to create a, a pv of 1 gb and since I'm not using any NFS, any ASCSI disk or any cloud provider like EBS volume or uh, storage on uh, Google Cloud, I'm using my host system itself, right? So this is the path where this PV would be created. Persistent volume claim policy. So what to do with this persistent volume once the pod uh, dies, which is using this. So the pol policy is set to recycle. So there's one retain. And I think there's one more uh, called delete. Uh, probably we'll check the documentation for that. And the volume mode is file system because I'm going to create it on my file system. All right. So next I have the file for PVC. 
So this is my persistent volume claim. You can see name is my claim, kind is persistent volume claim. Access mode. So in order to bind one persistent volume claim to an, uh, to a persistent volume, their access modes should be same. So if this access mode does not match this, these two will never bind, right? So it will stay in pending mode. And then I'm requesting the storage from this persistent volume. So I'm actually requesting the complete storage, one gig, right? So I've created a persistent volume of one gig and I'm requesting one gig, right? So this should work. So let me clear the screen and do kubectl apply and first do pv. So we'll first create a persistent volume, get pv. So you can see it's available, right? And now we are going to do kubectl apply f pvc. All right, persistent volume frame is also created. And you can see its status has changed to bound. So it has bound itself to this PV, right? So if you do kubectl describe uh, PVC, my claim. So you can see uh, the complete information over here, right? All right, so now what I'm going to do, so you can see the volume. So volume is my PV, right? Let me clear the screen. So now I'm going to launch, uh, create a pod and then mount this claim inside that pod, right? So let's do kubectl run uh, my pod image nginx. Since we need the uh, YAML file for it, so this is all thing you know, right? Try run client no YAML and will my pod dot yaml right we'll go inside my pod dot yaml file get rid of things we don't need we'll get rid of this 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 all right so now i'm going to create volume mounts name I'll say my wall and mount path would be say sly where can I mount it? I'll mount it on MNT my wall all right now we'll go to volumes and name name would be my wall persistent volume claim and claim name the claim name was my claim so this is the claim which we actually want to mount in this uh, pod right so i think this is it let's save this file and if we let me clear the screen do kubectl apply my pod and i think i have made some mistake all right so let me fix this i need to check what what is it throwing so my pod is invalid spec forbidden pod updates me okay so first let me see kubectl get pods am i running any pod okay so there's one pod already running right so first let's get rid of this kubectl delete and see if we have any deployments so we have avengers one sec let me clear the screen and kubectl get deployments 
do we have any so no we don't kubectl delete pod my pod all right so this was the issue my pod is already running we didn't check that anyway no issues we'll probably um, all right the pod is gone ctl pods all right it's gone so now let's do kubectl apply hyphen f my pod all right pod is created kubectl pods yes it's creating now we'll just wait for this to come up kubectl or uh, rather let's do cat so mount path was my all right so kubectl get pods my pod is running now we'll do kubectl describe pod my pod so you can see mount it has been one mounted from my wall which is our pv right okay volume type is persistent volume claim my claim right things looks good so now if i do kubectl exec my pod ls hyphen lrt inside not my claim it was i think where did we mount it i'm empty my wall so okay there is no file but it's there right so this is how we actually mount a claim inside a pod all right so this is all i wanted to show you for this video uh, we'll probably be doing a video on storage classes and we'll see how dynamically these things can be done so in when you use storage class or even you use a cloud provided storage class you don't actually have to create a persistent volume you just define persistent volume claims in that case and the persistent volume are automatically i mean bound to your claims right so that that thing happens automatically uh, when you use storage classes so we'll probably talk about storage classes in our next video right so this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching